Welcome everyone. This is GL Supplemental Review. Today, we will be discussing 25 items of general education questions in preparation for September 2023 board exam for teachers. Prayer. Our Father, I turn to you seeking your divine help and mercy as I ask for your grace to help me pass my board exam. I ask for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding so that I can remember everything I have studied. Please do not abandon me in this time of need but grant me the favor I seek. I ask this in your holy name. Amen. Taking the time to review and improve your knowledge and skills is a crucial step in becoming a licensed professional teacher, LPT. By committing to a thorough and dedicated review process, you'll be better equipped to succeed in the LPT exam and, more importantly, to excel in your teaching career. As you review, you'll gain a deeper understanding of the principles and practices of effective teaching, and you'll be able to apply this knowledge in the classroom to help your students succeed. Remember that becoming an LPT is not just about passing an exam, it's about committing to a lifelong pursuit of excellence in teaching. So take the time to review thoroughly, and know that your efforts will be rewarded with a fulfilling and impactful career as an LPT. As a teacher preparing for the board exam, you know how important it is to have access to high-quality resources and support. By subscribing to this channel, you'll gain access to expert guidance, comprehensive study materials, and proven strategies for success on the board exam. Our content is designed specifically to help teachers like you ace the exam and achieve your professional goals. Don't miss out on this opportunity to get the edge you need to succeed. Subscribe to our channel today and join our community of aspiring educators. Thank you for your support. Subscription is free. Please click the subscribe button, including the notification bell, to be updated on our newest videos. This quote by Theodore Roosevelt emphasizes the importance of self-belief and confidence in achieving success. It reminds us that having faith in our abilities and maintaining a positive mindset can propel us forward towards our goals. Question number one. What figure of speech is used in this line? 20 sales came into the Manila Harbor today. A. Metonymy. B. Metaphor. C. Synecdoche. D. Alliteration. What figure of speech is used in this line? 20 sales came into the Manila Harbor today. For question number one, the answer is C. Synecdoche. In the given line, 20 sales came into the Manila Harbor today, synecdoche is used. The word, sales, represents a larger concept of ships or vessels. It is a figure of speech in which a part is used to refer to the whole. Metonymy. Metonymy is a figure of speech where a word or phrase is substituted with another closely associated word or phrase. It is often used to represent a concept or idea related to the original word. An example of metonymy is, the White House issued a statement, where, White House, is used to refer to the government or the administration. Metaphor. Metaphor is a figure of speech that directly compares two unrelated things, highlighting their similarities without using, like, or, as. It creates a figurative meaning by suggesting that one thing is another. For example, her voice is music to my ears, compares the pleasantness of someone's voice to the beauty of music. Alliteration. Alliteration is a figure of speech where a series of words in a phrase or sentence have the same initial consonant sound. It is used for poetic or rhetorical effect. An example of alliteration is, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, where the P sound is repeated. Question number two. The guest speaker expressed with blank how she financed her college education through loans. A. Candor. B. Ranker. C. Penchant. D. Aplomb. The guest speaker expressed with blank how she financed her college education through loans. For question number two, the correct answer is A. Candor. In the given sentence, the word, candor, refers to the quality of being open, 
honest, and sincere in expressing oneself. The speaker openly shared information about financing her college education through loans. Rancor. Rancor refers to a deep and long-lasting feeling of bitterness, resentment, or hostility. It typically arises from a past grievance or conflict. Penchant. Penchant refers to a strong inclination, liking, or preference for something. It suggests a tendency or natural inclination towards a particular activity, object, or behavior. Aplomb. Aplomb refers to self-confidence, composure, or poise in demanding or challenging situations. It implies a cool and collected manner of handling difficult circumstances. Question number three. When hammering a nail through a wood, I am very careful not to wound, blank. A. Herself. B. Himself. C. Ourselves. D. Myself. When hammering a nail through a wood, I am very careful not to wound, blank. For question number three, the answer is, D, myself. In the given sentence, myself, is the appropriate pronoun to use. Question number four, Maria is chopping a vegetables when she cut, blank. A, himself. B, yourself. C, themselves. D, herself. Maria is chopping a vegetables when she cut, blank. For question number four, the answer is, D, herself. Question number five, last night, they, blank, working on the project. A, sat up. B, upset. C, sit up. D, sated. Last night, they, blank, working on the project. For question number five, the answer is, A, sat up. In the given sentence, the phrase, sat up, indicates that, they, stayed awake while working on the project during the previous night. Question number six, whose view gives prominence to the faith in understanding the existence of God? A, Saint Augustine. B, Saint Aquinas. C, Saint Columsad. D, Saint Ruiz. Whose view gives prominence to the faith in understanding the existence of God? For question number six, the answer is A. Saint Augustine. Saint Augustine, a significant figure in Christian theology, emphasized the importance of faith in his writings. He believed that faith was crucial for understanding God and the divine truths. Augustine argued that reason alone is limited and cannot fully comprehend the mysteries of God. He emphasized the need for a profound faith that surpasses rationality in order to have a deeper understanding of God's existence and the truths of the Christian faith. Question number seven. To find the perimeter, P, of a square that has a side of 16 inches, which of the following equations can be used? A. Perimeter equals 4 times 16. B. Perimeter equals 2 times 16. C. Perimeter equals 16 plus 16. D. Perimeter equals 16 times 16. To find the perimeter, P, of a square that has a side of 16 inches, which of the following equations can be used? For question number 7, the answer is, A, perimeter equals 4 times 16. In a square, all sides are equal in length. Since the side length is given as 16 inches, multiplying it by 4 will give the total distance around the square, which is the perimeter. Therefore, the equation that correctly calculates the perimeter is P equals 4 times 16. Question number 8, Mark placed some mothballs inside his cabinet. After a week they were all gone. What happened to the mothballs? A. They condensed. B. They melted. C. They were dissolved. D. They sublimed.
Mark placed some mothballs inside his cabinet. After a week they were all gone. What happened to the mothballs? For question number 8, the answer is D. They sublimed. Mothballs are made primarily of naphthalene or paradichlorobenzene, both of which are volatile compounds. Sublimation is the process by which a solid directly transitions into a gas without going through the liquid phase. In the case of mothballs, when exposed to air, they undergo sublimation, turning from a solid directly into a gas and gradually dissipating into the surrounding environment. Therefore, after a week, the mothballs would have disappeared as a result of sublimation. The state of matter refers to the physical form that a substance can exist in, such as solid, liquid, or gas. Changes in the state of matter can occur through processes known as phase changes or phase transitions. Let's discuss the different types of phase changes. Melting. This is the process in which a solid substance changes into a liquid state. It occurs when the temperature of the substance increases to its melting point. The particles gain enough energy to overcome the forces holding them in a fixed position, causing them to move more freely and form a liquid. Freezing. Freezing is the opposite of melting. It is the process by which a liquid substance changes into a solid state. When the temperature decreases to the freezing point, the particles slow down and arrange themselves in a regular pattern, forming a solid structure. Vaporization. Vaporization is the general term for the phase change from a liquid to a gas. It can happen in two ways. A. Evaporation. This is a surface phenomenon that occurs when the more energetic particles at the surface of a liquid gain enough energy to overcome intermolecular forces and escape into the surrounding air. Evaporation can happen at any temperature, but it occurs more rapidly as the temperature increases. B. Boiling. Boiling is a rapid vaporization process that occurs throughout the entire liquid, not just the surface. It happens when the temperature of a liquid reaches its boiling point, where the vapor pressure of the liquid is equal to the atmospheric pressure. Condensation. Condensation is the transition from a gas to a liquid state. It occurs when a gas cools down, losing energy, and its particles slow down. As a result, the gas particles come closer together and form a liquid. Sublimation. Sublimation is the direct transition from a solid to a gas without passing through the liquid phase. Substances that undergo sublimation can go from a solid state to a gaseous state when heated, bypassing the liquid phase altogether. When cooling, the reverse process called deposition can occur, where a gas changes directly into a solid. Deposition is the phase change from a gas directly to a solid without passing through the liquid phase. It is the reverse process of sublimation. During deposition, the gas loses energy, usually due to a decrease in temperature or an increase in pressure causing the gas particles to slow down and come together to form a solid. This solid is typically deposited onto a surface. An example of deposition is when water vapor in the air comes into contact with a cold surface, such as a window or a mirror. The water vapor loses energy to the cold surface and undergoes deposition, transforming directly into solid water crystals, commonly known as frost. These phase changes are fundamental to understanding the behavior of different substances and their transformations under varying conditions of temperature and pressure. Question number 9. The part of a newspaper or magazine article, which gives the name of the writer of article is called, blank. A. Headline. B. Banner line. C. Editorial. D. Byline. The part of a newspaper or magazine article, which gives the name of the writer of article is called, blank. For question number 9, the answer is D. Byline. A byline is the part of a newspaper or magazine article that provides the name of the writer or author of the article. It typically appears at the beginning or end of the article and serves to credit the writer for their work. The byline is an important component in identifying and attributing the authorship of a specific article in a publication. A newspaper is typically divided into several sections or parts, each serving a specific purpose and containing different types of content. Here are the common parts of a newspaper. Front page. The front page is the first page of the newspaper and is considered the most important. It usually features the most significant news stories and eye-catching headlines, along with relevant images or photographs. Headline. The headline is the title or brief summary of a news article. It is designed to grab the reader's attention and provide a snapshot of the main story. 
Byline. The byline, as we discussed earlier, is the part of the article that mentions the name of the writer or author. Sections. Newspapers often have various sections that cover different topics. Some common sections include a. Local, regional news. This section focuses on news stories and events happening within the local area or region where the newspaper is published. b. National, international news. This section covers news stories and events of national or international importance, including politics, economics, global affairs, and more. c. Business, economy. This section features news and articles related to business, finance, stock markets, companies, and economic trends. d. Sports. The sports section provides coverage of various sports events, scores, analysis, and profiles of athletes. e. Entertainment. This section focuses on news and articles related to movies, music, television, celebrities, arts, and culture. f. Lifestyle. The lifestyle section covers a wide range of topics such as fashion, health, travel, food, relationships, and personal development. g. Opinion, editorial. This section includes opinion pieces, editorials, and commentary written by columnists or guest contributors, expressing their views on current issues. h. Classifieds. Classified advertisements typically appear in a separate section, offering services, job postings, real estate listings, and various other classified categories. Back page, sports page. The back page is often dedicated to sports news, highlights, and major sporting events. It is where readers can find in-depth coverage, scores, and analysis. Obituaries. Obituaries are dedicated sections that announce the deaths and provide brief biographies or tributes to individuals who have passed away. Comics, crossword. Some newspapers include sections for comic strips, puzzles, and crosswords, offering entertainment and leisure activities for readers. These are the general parts or sections commonly found in a newspaper, although the specific layout and content may vary depending on the publication. Question number 10. All of these are the beneficial effects of scientific knowledge except a. Solution to practical problems. b. Making informed decisions. c. Pursuance of political agenda. d. Development of new technology. All of these are the beneficial effects of scientific knowledge except for question number 10. The answer is C. Pursuance of political agenda. Scientific knowledge has numerous beneficial effects, but it is not primarily focused on pursuing political agendas. The pursuit of a political agenda involves promoting specific political interests, ideologies, or goals, which may or may not align with scientific knowledge or principles. Here are the explanations for the other options. A. Solution to practical problems. Scientific knowledge enables us to understand and address practical problems by providing insights, theories, and evidence-based solutions. Through scientific research and innovation, practical challenges in fields like medicine, engineering, agriculture, and environmental conservation can be addressed. b. Making informed decisions. Scientific knowledge equips individuals and societies with information and data necessary for making informed decisions. It helps us understand the world around us, assess risks, evaluate evidence, and make rational choices in various aspects of life, including personal, societal, and policy decisions. d. Development of new technology. Scientific knowledge drives the development of new technologies. Through scientific research, discoveries, and advancements, we can create innovative tools, devices, and processes that improve our lives, enhance efficiency, and solve complex problems. While scientific knowledge can inform political decisions and policies, it is important that political decisions are based on a sound understanding of scientific evidence rather than being driven solely by political agendas. Question number 11. The laws of heredity were the results of the study of blank. A. Blaise Pascal. B. Charles Darwin. C. Alexander Fleming. D. Gregor Mendel. The laws of heredity were the results of the study of blank. For question number 11, the correct answer is D. Gregor Mendel. Gregor Mendel, an Austrian monk and scientist, is widely recognized as the father of modern genetics. 
In the mid-19th century, Mendel conducted groundbreaking experiments on pea plants in the garden of his monastery. Through meticulous crossbreeding and observation, Mendel formulated the fundamental laws of heredity, which laid the foundation for the field of genetics. Mendel's work established the principles of inheritance and provided insights into how traits are passed from one generation to the next. His discoveries, published in 1866 in his paper, Experiments on Plant Hybridization, describe concepts such as dominant and recessive traits, segregation, and independent assortment. However, it is important to note that Mendel's work initially went largely unnoticed and it was only later rediscovered and recognized as the basis for modern genetics. Blaise Pascal. Blaise Pascal was a French mathematician, physicist, and philosopher. He made significant contributions to mathematics and physics. Pascal is best known for his work in probability theory, the development of Pascal's triangle, and his contributions to the understanding of fluids, particularly Pascal's law. Charles Darwin. Charles Darwin was an English naturalist and biologist who is famous for his theory of evolution through natural selection. Darwin's work revolutionized the field of biology and had a profound impact on our understanding of the diversity of life on Earth. His book, On the Origin of Species, presented the concept of natural selection as the mechanism for species evolution. Alexander Fleming. Alexander Fleming was a Scottish biologist and pharmacologist. He is best known for his discovery of the antibiotic substance penicillin. Fleming's discovery of penicillin revolutionized medicine and laid the foundation for the development of antibiotics, saving countless lives and significantly improving medical treatment worldwide. Question number 12. In the following numbers, which digit is in the thousandths place? 987,654,321.123456. A. 3. B. 4. C. 5. D. 6. In the number 987,654,321.123456, the digit in the thousandths place is 3. Therefore, option A is correct. Question number 13. Some qualities that would describe Jose Rizal except, blank, A. Audacious, B. Courageous, C. Intelligent, D. Pessimistic. The qualities that would describe Jose Rizal except, pessimistic, therefore, option D, is the correct answer. Jose Rizal, the national hero of the Philippines, was known for his remarkable qualities and contributions. Let's examine each of the given qualities and why they are applicable to Jose Rizal, except for pessimistic. A. Audacious. Jose Rizal was known for his audacity and boldness in advocating for reforms during the Spanish colonial era. He fearlessly challenged oppressive systems and spoke up against injustices. B. Courageous. Rizal exhibited great courage throughout his life. He fearlessly expressed his ideas, criticized social issues, and actively fought for the rights and welfare of the Filipino people. His bravery was evident in his writings, speeches, and actions. C. Intelligent. Jose Rizal was widely recognized for his exceptional intellect. He was a polymath who excelled in various fields, including literature, medicine, architecture, and more. Rizal's intelligence played a crucial role in his efforts to enlighten and awaken the Filipino people. D. Pessimistic. The quality that does not describe Jose Rizal is pessimistic. Rizal was not characterized by a negative or pessimistic outlook. On the contrary, he was optimistic and had hope for the future of the Philippines. His writings and actions reflected his belief in the capacity of the Filipino people to bring about positive change. Question number 14. Every co-curricular activity has, blank, merits. A. It's. B. It. C. There. D. It's. Every co-curricular activity has, blank, merits. For question number 14, the correct answer is option A. It's. In the sentence, 
Every co-curricular activity has its merits. The pronoun, it's, is used to show possession or ownership. Since co-curricular activity is singular, we use the singular pronoun, it's, to indicate that each activity has its own merits. Options B, it, C, there, and D, it's, are not suitable in this context. Let's discuss the usage of possessive pronouns in general and provide examples. Possessive pronouns are used to show ownership or possession of something. They replace a noun and indicate that something belongs to someone or something else. Here are the commonly used possessive pronouns. His, used to indicate possession by a male singular noun. Example. John lost his book. Her, used to indicate possession by a female singular noun. Example. Emily found her keys. It's, used to indicate possession by a non-human singular noun. Example. The dog wagged its tail. R, used to indicate possession by a plural noun, including the speaker. Example. We decorated our house for the party. Your, used to indicate possession by the persons being spoken to. Example. Did you bring your umbrella? There, used to indicate possession by a plural noun that does not include the speaker or persons being spoken to. Example. The children rode their bikes to the park. It's important to choose the appropriate possessive pronoun based on the number, singular or plural, and gender of the noun it replaces. This helps accurately convey the ownership or possession in a sentence. Question number 15. Which of the following graph is useful in displaying data or information that change continuously over time? A. Bar graph. B. Histogram. C. Line graph. D. Scatter plot. The graph that is useful in displaying data or information that changes continuously over time is option C. Line graph. A line graph is an effective way to represent trends and changes over time. It consists of data points connected by line segments, illustrating the relationship between the data and the progression of time. Line graphs are commonly used to display various types of data such as stock market trends, population growth, temperature changes, and sales figures over time. Let's briefly explain the other options. A. Bar graph. A bar graph is useful for comparing different categories or discrete data points. It uses rectangular bars of varying heights to represent the data. Bar graphs are often used to compare data sets or show categorical data, but they are not ideal for representing continuous changes over time. B. Histogram. A histogram is used to represent the distribution of continuous data. It consists of a series of adjacent rectangles or bins that represent the frequency or count of data points falling within each bin. Histograms are useful for understanding the shape and distribution of data, but they do not explicitly show changes over time. D. Scatter plot. A scatter plot is used to display the relationship between two variables. It represents individual data points as dots on a graph, where the position of each dot corresponds to the values of the two variables. Scatter plots are useful for identifying patterns or correlations between variables but are not specifically designed to show changes over time. Question number 16. The generalized image of an object is called blank. A. Definition. B. Impression. C. Concept. D. Mental picture. The generalized image of an object is called blank. For question number 16, the answer is C. Concept. A concept is a mental representation or understanding of something that is formed by generalizing and abstracting information about objects, ideas, or experiences. It allows us to categorize and organize information based on shared characteristics or properties. Therefore, a concept represents a generalized image or understanding of an object or idea. Question number 17. Which of the following discoveries is associated with Alexander Fleming? A. Invention of the telephone. B. Discovery of penicillin. C. Development of the theory of relativity. D. Exploration of the North Pole.
Which of the following discoveries is associated with Alexander Fleming? For question number 17, the answer is B. Discovery of penicillin. Alexander Fleming was a Scottish biologist and pharmacologist who is best known for his discovery of penicillin, one of the most important and widely used antibiotics in the world. Fleming was born on August 6, 1881, in Lockfield, Scotland. He initially pursued a medical career and graduated with a medical degree from St. Mary's Hospital Medical School, now part of Imperial College London, in 1906. In 1928, while working at St. Mary's Hospital in London, Fleming made his groundbreaking discovery. He noticed that a petri dish containing Staphylococcus bacteria had been contaminated by a mold called Penicillium notatum. Around the mold, he observed a clear zone where the bacteria didn't grow, indicating that something produced by the mold inhibited bacterial growth. Fleming identified this substance as penicillin, a naturally occurring antibiotic. Fleming published his findings, but initially, penicillin didn't receive much attention. It wasn't until the 1940s, during World War II, that the potential of penicillin as an effective treatment for bacterial infections gained recognition. The mass production and widespread use of penicillin revolutionized medicine, saving countless lives and significantly reducing mortality rates from previously deadly infections. For his discovery of penicillin, Alexander Fleming was jointly awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1945, along with Howard Florey and Ernst Chain, who were instrumental in the development of penicillin as a drug. Fleming's work laid the foundation for the development of many other antibiotics and greatly influenced the field of medicine. His contribution to the fight against infectious diseases continues to be recognized and celebrated to this day. Let's discuss the other options. A. Invention of the telephone. The invention of the telephone is attributed to Alexander Graham Bell. Alexander Graham Bell was a Scottish-born scientist and inventor who is widely recognized for his pioneering work on the telephone. In 1876, Bell received a patent for his invention, which revolutionized communication by enabling voice transmission over long distances. C. Development of the theory of relativity. The theory of relativity was formulated by Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein, a renowned physicist, developed the theory of relativity, which comprises both the special theory of relativity, 1905, and the general theory of relativity, 1915. These theories revolutionized our understanding of space, time, and gravity, and are considered fundamental pillars of modern physics. D. Exploration of the North Pole. The exploration of the North Pole involved various explorers and expeditions. Notable explorers like Robert Perry, Roald Amundsen, and Richard E. Byrd were involved in significant expeditions to the North Pole contributing to our knowledge of the Arctic region and its geography. In summary, while Alexander Fleming is associated with the discovery of penicillin, the other options involve notable individuals and achievements in different fields such as communication technology, physics, and Arctic exploration. Question number 18. Which of the following organisms is responsible for causing amoebic dysentery? A. Plasmodium vivax. B. Giardia lamblia. C. Entamoeba histolytica. D. Trypanosoma cruzi. Which of the following organisms is responsible for causing amoebic dysentery? For question number 18, the correct answer is C. Entamoeba histolytica. Entamoeba histolytica is the organism responsible for causing amoebic dysentery a gastrointestinal infection characterized by severe diarrhea, abdominal pain, and potentially life-threatening complications. It is a parasitic protist that infects the intestines and can spread to other organs, such as the liver, causing amoebic liver abscesses. Now let's discuss the other options. A. Plasmodium vivax. Plasmodium vivax is the protozoan parasite responsible for causing malaria, a mosquito-borne infectious disease. It does not cause amoebic dysentery, which is specifically associated with Entamoeba histolytica. B. Giardia lamblia. Giardia lamblia, also known as Giardia intestinalis, is another protozoan parasite that causes a gastrointestinal infection called giardiasis. It is characterized by symptoms such as diarrhea, abdominal cramps, and bloating. While giardiasis can lead to diarrhea, it is not classified as amoebic dysentery caused by Entamoeba histolytica. D. Trypanosoma cruzi. Trypanosoma cruzi is the protozoan parasite responsible for causing Chagas disease, 
a tropical disease transmitted by insects, mainly triatomine bugs. Chagas disease primarily affects the heart and digestive system, but it does not cause amoebic dysentery. Question number 19. How long will it take A and B together, to finish a job which can be done by A alone in 6 days and B alone in 3 days? A. 2 days. B. 2 and a half days. C. 3 days. D. 3 and a half days. How long will it take A and B together, to finish a job which can be done by A alone in 6 days and B alone in 3 days? We can solve this problem by using the formula. 1 over A, plus, 1 over B, equals, 1 over T, then, substitute the given to the formula. That will become 1 over 6 plus 1 over 3 equals 1 over T. You will notice that it is a dissimilar fraction. The less common denominator is 6. 6 divide 6 is, 1 then, 1 times 1, that will give you 1, then copy the operation, plus, then 6 divide 3 is, 2, then, 2 times 1 is, 2, simplifying, 1 plus 2 over 6, will give 3 over 6 equals 1 over t, by cross multiplication, this will become 3 t equals 6, divide both side by 3, you will left with t as equals to 2, therefore, the answer is option a 2. Question number 20. How many seconds are there in a day? A. 24 seconds. B. 60 seconds. C. 360 seconds. D. 86,400 seconds. How many seconds are there in a day? For question number 20, the correct answer is D. 86,400 seconds. There are 24 hours in a day, and each hour contains 60 minutes. Therefore, there are 24 times 60 equals 1440 minutes in a day. Since each minute has 60 seconds, we multiply 1440 by 60 to get the total number of seconds in a day. 1440 times 60 equals 86,400 seconds. So, there are 86,400 seconds in a day. Question number 21. Three people, A, B, and C, are working together. According to a partitive ratio of 1, 2 to 3, how many hours did person B work if the total work duration was 24 hours? A. 4 hours. B. 8 hours. C. 12 hours. D. 16 hours. Three people, A, B, and C, are working together. According to a partitive ratio of 1, 2 to 3, how many hours did person B work if the total work duration was 24 hours? For question number 21, the answer is, B, 8 hours. Here's a step-by-step -step solution to calculate person B's working hours based on the given partitive ratio and total work duration. Step 1, calculate the total number of parts in the partitive ratio. 1 plus 2 plus 3 equals 6 parts. Step 2. Determine the value of 1 part. Divide the total work duration by the total number of parts. 1 part equals 24 hours divide 6 equals 4 hours. Step 3. Calculate person B's working hours. Since person B's share is 2 parts, multiply the value of 1 part by 2. Person B's working hours equals 2 parts times 4 hours per part equals 8 hours. Therefore, person, B, worked for 8 hours. Question number 22. Which of the following is an effective method for reducing water pollution? A. Increasing industrial waste discharge. B. Implementing water treatment systems. C. Dumping chemicals into water bodies. D. Encouraging littering near water sources. Which of the following is an effective method for reducing water pollution? For question number 22, the correct answer is B. 
Implementing water treatment systems. Implementing water treatment systems is an effective method for reducing water pollution. These systems help to remove pollutants and contaminants from wastewater before it is discharged back into the environment. By treating the water, harmful substances can be removed or reduced, minimizing the impact on water bodies and ecosystems. Question number 23. What is the primary cause of acid rain? A. Excessive sunlight exposure. B. Volcanic eruptions. C. Burning fossil fuels. D. Natural precipitation patterns. What is the primary cause of acid rain? For question number 23, the correct answer is C. Burning fossil fuels. The primary cause of acid rain is the burning of fossil fuels, such as coal, oil, and natural gas, for various human activities. When these fuels are burned, they release sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides into the atmosphere. These pollutants can react with water, oxygen, and other chemicals in the air to form sulfuric acid and nitric acid. These acids then fall to the earth as acid rain. Question number 24. What does the number of protons in an atom determine? A. Atomic mass. B. Atomic number. C. Electron configuration. D. Chemical reactivity. What does the number of protons in an atom determine? For question number 24, the correct answer is B. Atomic number. The number of protons in an atom determines the atomic number of that element. The atomic number represents the unique identity of an element and determines its position in the periodic table. Each element has a specific number of protons, and this number distinguishes one element from another. Atomic mass, on the other hand, is determined by the combined mass of protons, neutrons, and electrons in an atom. Question number 25. What happens to a plant cell placed in a hypotonic solution? A. It shrinks. B. It stays the same size. C. It swells and becomes turgid. D. It undergoes cytolysis and bursts. What happens to a plant cell placed in a hypotonic solution? For question number 25, the correct answer is C. It swells and becomes turgid. When a plant cell is placed in a hypotonic solution, which has a lower solute concentration compared to the cell's cytoplasm, water moves into the cell by osmosis. The influx of water causes the plant cell to swell and become turgid. This is because plant cells have a rigid cell wall that can withstand the increased internal pressure. The cell wall exerts an equal pressure in all directions, resulting in the cell becoming turgid, firm, and rigid. This turgor pressure helps maintain the structural integrity of the cell and provides support to the plant. However, in animal cells or certain circumstances, a hypotonic solution can cause cells to undergo cytolysis, where the excessive influx of water leads to the cell bursting or lysing. This is because animal cells lack a rigid cell wall and are more susceptible to the osmotic pressure. Therefore, option C is the correct choice for what happens to a plant cell in a hypotonic solution. Thank you for watching Geo's LED review. I hope they've been helpful in your exam preparation. Remember that success in the LED requires consistency and dedication, so I encourage you to come back for more videos to help you stay on track with your studies. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss any new videos. My goal is to provide you with high-quality content that helps you feel confident and prepared for the exam. So, let's work together towards your success in the LET. Keep studying hard and I'll see you in the next video.